If you want to learn how to make a game in Unity, this tutorial should help you learn how to create a basic scoring system. In the last video, we added code that triggers when our player flies into an obstacle or through a point collider. Now it's time to build on that and count each pipe our player dodges and add it as a point on a scoreboard. To create a scoreboard, the first thing we'll do in Unity is create a canvas object. To do this, I'll go into our hierarchy, right click, go down to UI, and left click on canvas. Since this canvas will house all of our UI or user interface game objects, let's rename it to game UI. You may have noticed when we added our game UI canvas, an event system was automatically added in by Unity. All this will do is handle stuff like clicks for buttons and other things like that that we'll get into a little bit later. But for now, in our game UI canvas, let's tweak a few things in the inspector. The first thing I'll do is go down into our canvas scaler to best account for a variety of screen resolutions. Let's change where it says UI scale mode from constant pixel size to scale with screen size. I'll just left click on that. And because 1920 by 1080 is often the most common resolution, I found this to be a good size to work in regardless of your own monitor's resolution. So I'll type down here my reference resolution 1920 by 1080. Because we have this set to scale with screen, it will scale up or down pretty well. Next, in order to get some text to show up here in our game, let's go back to our game UI object here, right click on it, go down to UI to select all the UI options and we'll select text. Because this text game object will hold our score, let's go ahead and rename it to current score. And believe it or not, we actually are seeing it. It's this tiny little dot down here in the middle of our screen. Now, when you're working with UI objects, you'd think all you have to do is increase the font size from 14 to something slightly larger, but you'll quickly see it disappears. And that's because there's a few things we need to change first. I'll back out of that by hitting controller command Z and you still see we now have the 14 font size. The best thing to do is just double click on the object you're trying to work on and you can see it zooms me really closely into this text game object that we just created. We can expand the font size here just slightly to see how it will begin to come closer into view. You'll notice this other box around the text field, that's actually gonna be the borders. So if you go beyond that, it'll just disappear, meaning it's too big for the box that it's inside. You may remember in part one, we talked about this rec tool. This is what we're gonna use in 2D most often to change the size of our UI objects. I'll left click on that and you'll see these four little dots pop up, one for each corner. To expand this box, I'll take one of these blue dots and hover over it with my mouse. Then I'll left click to grab it. So make sure you left click first, then hold the Alt button. And when you do that, you can grab all four corners at the same time and spread it out. You can now see our game object has a bit more room. To place this in the center of our screen, I'll go into my text component here and just hit this center align button here in my alignment section. I'll left click on that, and then I'll increase the font size a bit more. Now you can kind of see in our game here, it's beginning to look more like it fits into the rest of the scene. I'll keep mine at 180, and then I'll change the font style from normal to bold, just to give it a little bit more pop. Now because our current score will be showing numbers and not text, I'm gonna change where it says new text here to zero, just to get a better idea of how this is gonna look in our game. Next, let's change the color from this dark color to white. So I'll go down into my color field here, left click, and just move this up to white. This is totally a preference thing. You're welcome to change this to any color you like. I'll go ahead and close the color picker here. Next, to make sure this really scales and stays in the center of our screen, I'm gonna to scroll to the top. Unlike the other transform components we've seen on our other game objects, we have a rec transform here. And something different you might notice is it really emphasizes anchoring. To make sure our score stays in the very center of our screen regardless of our aspect ratio, I'm gonna left click on this middle center. It's gonna open up our anchor presets to snap it to the top and make sure it stretches across and stays in the center of our screen, I'll go over here, hold the Alt button down on my keyboard, and you'll see arrows that spread across the top of the screen. Let's left click on that. You'll see our object snaps to the top, and now the anchor points for our rec transform are anchored to the edge of our current screen. If we move our current screen down here by changing it in the free aspect mode, the current score object changes in size as well, so it always stays in the center. Perfect. Next, let's put our current score to use to track and show our player their current score. Over in our scripts folder, I'm gonna right click, go up to create and left click on C Sharp script to create a new C Sharp script and we'll name it score manager. Next, with our current score game object selected, let's left click on our score manager script that we just created and bring it over as a component in our current score object, just like that. Next, let's double click our score manager script to open it up. Inside our new score manager script, let's remove these two namespaces at the top and also remove our update method. We won't need those. 
Next, down in our score manager class, let's add a text variable and name it score text. You'll notice here that we get an error. This is because Unity's UI variables aren't accessible in our script by default. We talked about namespaces earlier in this tutorial series, but we've only ever removed ones we didn't need. However, this time, we actually need to add a new namespace. To do this, simply go up under our Unity Engine namespace, hit an enter, and type the word using. Then we'll type Unity Engine again, dot UI. This allows us to access Unity's UI variables, such as this text variable that we just created. Next, with your score text copied, let's go down into the start method, left click and hit Controller Command V on your keyboard to paste it. Now, to set this equal to the text component on our current score object, let's type equals get component. Next, we need to type the less than and greater than symbols and an open and close parentheses with a semicolon. To specify which component we want to get, let's click inside this less than and greater than symbol and just type the word text, just like that. Okay, with our score text variable now set up, let's go below our start method and add a new method called add point. So I'll left click after the little curly braces, space down a couple times, and then just type the word void add point. Now inside our add point method, let's copy and paste the score text variable. So I'll double left click to highlight it, hit controller command C on my keyboard to copy it, then controller command V to paste it inside my add point method. And after the variable, let's type dot, then the word text to access our text components text field. And to create new text, we need to type whatever words or numbers we wanna show and place them within quotation marks. For now, let's type add point. Perfect. We'll soon connect this to the point collider method we created in the last video, but for now, to test out our add point method, let's just call it in our start method. So I'll highlight add point, hit controller command C to copy it, and then move it right below where we assign our score text variable, and then hit controller command S to save my script. Then we'll head back into Unity. Now back in Unity, if I click play, our script should change from zero to add point. Okay, now we need a way to track our points and update this text a little more dynamically. To do this, let's head back into our score manager script. Back in our score manager script, the first thing we'll do is create an int to hold our scores number value. So under our text variable, let's type int and then we'll name it current score. Next, let's select our new int variable by double left clicking on it, hitting control or command C on your keyboard to copy it. And right above where it says score text dot text, let's hit an enter, then control or command V to paste the current score variable. Like other variables we've created in this tutorial series so far, our current score variable starts at zero. And that's perfect because we don't want the player to have any points at the beginning. To take our current score and add one point to it, all we need to do is type plus plus. Adding plus plus at the end of our variable just means anytime this method is called, it will add one to the current variable's value. Now to get our current score value to show up in our score text text field, all we have to do is replace this add point text that we put in here with our variable. Control or command V to paste it in here. When we pasted our current score variable, you may have noticed we're getting an error. This is because our score text text requires a string value. Strings hold letters and words similar to what we typed out in our first message. There are a few ways to fix this, but I found the best way is to simply add dot to string at the end of our current score variable. Just like that. All this to string does is take our current score integer value and converts it into a string. Next, let's save our script and test this out in Unity. When we click play in Unity, we should see that our text displays a one. This is because we're taking our current score default value of zero, adding one to it, then updating the text to show its current value of one. Great. Now we're ready to connect a few scripts together and complete our scoring system. Let's head back into the score manager script one last time. Back in our score manager script, let's go in front of our add point method here and type the word public. Then I'll hit a space. Unlike the other private methods we've created so far, we'll need access to this one from other scripts, specifically our player collide manager script. Now that we made our add point method public, let's go into our player collide manager script. Inside our player collide manager script, let's create a new variable. This variable will act as a direct link to our score manager script. So let's type score manager as the variable type. Then I'll name it score manager. Next to make this accessible in Unity, type open and close brackets and then serialize field. If you'll remember in the last video, we added this debug.log add point. 
In order to actually add a point, let's take our score manager script here by double left clicking on it. I'll hit control or command C to copy it. Then I'll go below debug.log add point and I will hit control or command V to paste it. And now when I type dot add point, you'll see it pops up here as a method we can call from within this script. If you don't see add point show up here, make sure that you recently saved your score manager script. So I'll hit enter to select it and then just hit open and close parentheses followed by a semicolon. Great, now let's go back into our score manager script one last time and make sure that we remove the call to our add point method from the start method here. So I'll simply highlight it and delete it. Now we can save all of our scripts at the same time by hitting command or control shift and then S and you'll see all the scripts are saved at the same time. And that's it, let's head back over into Unity. Back in Unity, there's still a couple more things we need to set up to make this work. If we left click on our bird player, let's go to our player collide manager component and set our score manager variable by left clicking on our current score game object. Because if you remember, we attached our score manager script to our current score game object and dragging it into the slot. But if we click play, you'll notice one weird thing seems to happen. Anytime we cross over one of these add point colliders, it jumps up by six, just like that. And it's doing that because every time we cross over our add point collider here, it's firing off the same method six times, one for every collider that's currently attached to our player. When we built our bird player in the first part of this tutorial series, we left everything pretty much as is. So the sphere collider is what we want, but all these other game objects that we created down here also had colliders that we don't need. So to remove them, you can select the beak that has a box collider, left click on these three little dots and hit remove component. And then if we go and expand out our left eye and pupil and right eye and pupil, you'll see all of them have the same capsule collider. So we can actually remove all of them really quickly by holding shift and clicking to select everything so that it's all highlighted in blue. Then go over to the capsule collider, go to the three dots again, left click and go to remove component. That way on our bird player object here, the only collider we have left is this sphere collider on our bird player. If we click play one last time, You'll see anytime we cross over one of these pipes, our score goes up by one, which is what you would expect. Of course, our player can't do much if they hit a pipe. The game is basically over with no way to try again. Players won't be able to stop or reset our game, but we'll change that soon. Now that we've added points to our project, it's starting to feel more like a game. In the next video, we'll complete our project by adding a game over window that pops up if our player hits an obstacle. It'll show their final score and a button for them to play again. If you like this video, be sure to let me know by hitting that little thumbs up button down below. It's totally free and helps me out a ton. As always, please leave any comments or questions in the section down below. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.